Reynolds Aluminum, the strong, lightweight, rust-proof metal that does more jobs better, presents Frontier. The material for Frontier is gathered from diaries, letters, and official records. The stories are true, sometimes heroic, sometimes violent, sometimes gentle. All a part of our American heritage. Tonight's story is such a story. This is the West. This is the land of beginning again. This is the story of men and women facing the frontier. This is the way it happened. Killing in the Iron Mountain country of Wyoming. Done by Thorpe Henderson to a nameless man. The provocation was not known. At least it wasn't talked about. of ambush, the cunning of silence, and the quick, lonely slaying of a man Thorpe Henderson had been paid to kill. School teacher. Killing men is something I do better than anything else. There's a dare to it, and no little danger to myself. And I enjoy it. Like you enjoy what you can do better than anything. Your business, your profession, or something secret only you know about. And all the time, smiling inside yourself. Because what you do can't be equaled by anyone, anywhere. And they pay me for it. Good pay and high pay like anyone gets for a thing that's better and neater and cunnier. I kill and folks know me where I walk. Some glad at me, some turn away, but they know me where I walk. I kill and there's more to it than the money. I reckon that gives Thorpe Henderson a corner on the market. Slinger. What need for a man like that? There was a use for him once. No more. Now he walks the town of decent men and women. Man like me. Woman like my wife in there. And a killer walks the town. He ain't left a mark. Much as we've looked for it, he ain't left a mark proving he's a murderer. Something else, Marshal. He ain't never denied one, neither. But you'll come back to me. Yes, Evie? When? Would it make a difference whether soon, real soon, months away? Would it, Evie? No. No, not here, Thorpe. Their eyes haven't left us. They'll talk. Let them. But no, I don't want them to know. They were the secret times, so let them stare now. Secret times. You remember it? Not here, Thor. Please. 
say goodbye to me somewhere else? School teacher. Afraid of the light of day. Afraid of the eyes of a town. I teach their children. That's all I want them to know about me. When I'm back from Cheyenne, I'll take you from school teaching. And you'll love me open and not be ashamed of the love. Why do you have to go to Cheyenne? I've told you. Look, I've heard even the children say it. What? That, that you're going to a killing. That you're going where killings to be done. Do you mind what they say, Evie? You know what I figured? No matter what, you don't mind. Don't go. Cattlemen hired me for a job of work in Cheyenne. How do I say to them, school teacher whispered, don't go. So take your job of stock detective, gentlemen, and give it to someone else. The woman Eve said, don't go. How would that sound to the cattle owners? Now you tell me. School teacher said, don't take their money. Don't fool with them <laughs> cattle rustlers, Thorpe. School teacher said, stay with me. Love me. <laughs> That's it, Evie. That's how a goodbye ought to be. Howdy, gents. I said, howdy, gents. Ladies seem to be enjoying their thought. I was telling her goodbye. Like I stopped to say to you. Goodbye. Going someplace? Cheyenne. Seems there's need for a stock detective. A good one. Not like you were once, Harlan. Hey, nobody does it quite like you, is it, Thorpe? No. You get hired on, cattle rustlers just vanish from the earth. I put a scare on him, I guess. Just my name alone. Just my name gets whispered and rustlers do just like you said. Not a trace of them on the face of the earth. How many graves you dug for them in the wilderness, Thorpe? Why, none, Mr. Donnelly. Or maybe a score. I don't rightly remember. Seems I wouldn't remember about you if I had to dig yours. He didn't mean nothing, Thorpe. Oh, I reckon he didn't. Reckon he wouldn't want to spoil my goodbye, me saying it so nice. Man, it'd be crazy to spoil a goodbye of yours, Thorpe. He would, son. It's a thing I learned from the Apache when I was running after Geronimo. A thing I learned in the Pleasant Valley Wars when I was sheriff's deputy. Man gives his hand in friendship. Take it and be glad for it. You said you was going to Cheyenne. You coming back? I reckon I got to. Why? Promise the lady. Be cruel, I don't keep my promise to her. Crueler if you do. To her, to the whole town. You think that for true, Marshal? We don't need you here anymore, Thor. Town's changed. It's clean. It's got law. No need for a man like you anymore. And you saying it right out like that, right to my face. Saying to a man he's got no use to being. Don't come back, Thor. I reckon now I got to for sure. Lady saying things to me. You saying things. Be seeing you, gents. A little time, a long time. But I'll see you again. Talk big, Marshal. You said to him, don't come back. Yeah. How are you going to keep him from it? Put murder on him. Arrest him for it. Try him, hang him. You said yourself he never left no mark. You remember the killing of the Massey boy? Boy of 14. How could we not remember? His father was a cattle raider, it was said. Stole cattle from Mr. Vendor's herd, it was said. Said, too, that... Vendor killed the boy, thinking it was the boy's pa. Want a shred of evidence against him. I tried to hang him hard as a man could, but there wasn't a thing against him. And a boy murdered in the night, and no one to pay for it. You thinking something, Marshal? Thorpe's business is cattle raiders. He tracks them, murders them. Might be boy got in his way. 
cattle raider's son. That's what I was thinking. You'd do that? Get him hanged for something you ain't sure about? I'd have to be good and right and just. There's got to be an end to men of his breed. Just ain't any use to his being. Not anymore. Barkeep. Listen, Thorpe. I don't want to draw. Barkeep. Listen to me a minute, will you? I didn't mean to bump you. I just saw somebody I thought I knew. I hadn't seen her in a long time. You know how it is. I ran toward her, and I didn't look where I was going. Give the jet a drink of whiskey. Drink it, mister. Settle you down. You ain't settled now. And I don't want to take advantage. Drink it! At least you got a taste of it. Maybe what's come won't feel so bitter. <laughs> Crazy? It just ain't that important, that's all. There's other things more important. Get yourself mixed up in a little killing, what for? Man your size. Who's getting restless? What you here for, Harlan? There's some work over in Montana, if you'd care to. Man named Smith's worried about some cattle rustlers over in Miles City. Guess I could give you Mr. Smith's satisfaction. They rustless for true? Some men. Mr. Smith's got his reasons. He don't want them around much longer. I don't care how many they are. I can handle them. You know that, Harlan. If uh, Mr. Smith cares to give me the work, <laughs> I can do it for him. It needs talking about price and everything. Mr. Smith's got a room across the street. He's going to meet us there. Sure. Mr. Morse, Thorpe Henderson. Where's your riding? He's Mr. Smith's man, waiting for him. Writing some bills of laden for cattle or something. Now what? Well, sit and wait, I guess. Get the glasses. Say, Thorpe, help me out, would you, as an expert? You uh, were in Laramie when the Massey boy was killed, weren't you? Uh-huh. Who do you think did it? Just as talk I did. Seems every killing happens that I'm nearby. They say Thorpe Henderson's been at it again. <laughs> Massey boy was only 14. No difference, as far as I'm concerned, anyhow. What about this job of work Mr. Smith wants me to do? Yeah, he'll be here soon. How do you figure it was done? What? The, the Massey boy. No. I figure it was this way. Suppose a man was in the draw to the right of the gate of the Massey house. You know where that is. Well, I suppose a man was in that draw and the kid came running up on him and saw him. Then the kid started running for the house and the Fella killed him to keep the kid from running into the house and start a commotion. Well, I suppose you'd been in the draw. Would you be, um... Well, what would you be doing in the draw in the first place? Be wanting to kill his daddy. Be waiting for him. Everybody knows Massey was connected with some stock rustling. Mr. Bender's stock? Sure, there's talk of it all around Laramie. How far away would you say the Massey boy was when he was shot? Thorpe, how far away would you say the boy was when he was shot? 200 yards. 300, I guess. Thorpe, is that about as close as you like to get when you kill a man? About. <laughs> Just about. Thorpe. 
door. Let me ask you this. I hear you've been getting about $600 for a killing. Uh, you killed Lewis when he was riding fence in Texas, didn't you? Yeah, uh, I'd like to see the expression on his face. Most surprised man I ever saw. How about that other thing? What other thing? The $600 for the killing. I have been pay that. How about the Massey boy? Huh? You get paid before or after the job? <laughs> I always get paid before I do any job of work. Thorpe, I'm putting you under arrest. Before. The Massey boy killing. You confessed it all, Thorpe. Morse has got it down in writing. You put words in my mouth. He took them all down. I didn't confess to nothing. Nothing! Laramie County Courthouse, October 11th, 1902. Thorpe's attorney was named Arthur Stoddard, one of the best legal brains in the state. For the prosecution, Harvey Rogers, young man of brilliance. The presiding judge's name was Benson. He did much of the cross-examination. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony that you are about to give before this court is the whole truth, so help you God? I do. Take the stand. Miss Curtis, how long have you lived here in Laramie? Four years. And how long have you been teaching school? Four years. Now, Miss Curtis, will you tell me what your relation is with the defendant? Relation? How well you know him? Quite well. And what does that mean? I know him. I like him. Is that all? Your Honor, I'm not quite sure I know what you mean. In preliminary hearing, the defendant testified that he was with you at the time when William Massey was murdered. Is that correct? I don't know. What time was William Massey murdered? Everyone in town knows that it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, ma'am. The defendant said that... He's a liar! Let me finish. You're a liar! Foul mouth liar! She can't say. She can't tell us. School teacher. You told her that she loved you. She told the truth about being with me. They'd shame her right out of town. I'm under holy oath here, Your Honor. And I tell you that I was not with Thorpe Henderson at two o'clock in any morning in my life. I wouldn't be with any man alone and after dark unless he were my betrothed. He lied. Thank you, Miss Curtis. Any man who would lie in a matter like this, in a matter which casts a shadow over a good woman's name, would he not stoop to murder? On the third day of the trial, Thorpe Henderson took the stand. He stated the nature of his business was stock detective, having to do with cattle. I keep track of their cattle in a general way. The nature of my work is to see that they're all branded proper and that there's no stealing of them. And in case there is a stealing, then I find out who's stealing the cattle. Then what do you do? Then what do you do, Mr. Henderson? Answer me. I hear you're a bragging man, sir. One who likes to talk about himself. Talk about yourself a little bit. Never had a better audience. I... I... What do you do? Bring them to justice? Testify against them in an open trial? I guess so. You guess so. What happens to the men you catch cattle stealing, Thorpe? I don't remember. I hear it said that you become judge, jury, and executioner when you catch... Object! To hearsay! Sustained! Listen. Of course. We want to hear what you have to say, Thorpe. A cattle thief deserves to die, don't he? You ask anybody. You're so smart, you ask anybody what happens to cattle stealing. Kill him. Sure. Shoot him down like dogs. Sure. Like you did. Like you have done. Object! My client is on trial here for the murder of William Massey. And not for some trial. On trial because he's something evil and festering. Order. Order in this courtroom. 
Objection sustained. I want to read you something, Thorpe. Are you listening? Taken down word for word. The Hoffman Hotel, Cheyenne, April the 13th this year. Do you remember, Thorpe? Harlan asked you, what about the Massey kid? And you replied, I think it was this way. Suppose a man was in the draw to the right of the Massey's house. You know where that is. Well, I suppose a man was in that draw. All right, all right. All right what? I said it. But that don't mean I did it. But you described the way the murder was done exactly. The only way the murder could have been done. Oh? How would you know that? Because I know. Because I know about those things. I see. Now listen to this. Harlan, what would you be doing in the draw in the first place? Henderson, be wanting to kill the kid's daddy, be waiting for him. Am I quoting you correctly? Was that the language used by you? Harlan put words in my mouth. Now I don't see how, Thorpe. I don't see how at all. He asked you if you had any objection to killing a 14-year-old boy, and you said... You listen here. You listen. You want to get rid of me, that's all. You're scared. And you don't know what to do with me, so you want to hang me. Not scared, Thorpe. Not anymore. You are. All they have to do is hear my name and they run. I'm Thorpe Henderson, and they run! Folks, know me where I walk. Some glad hand me, some turn away. But they know me where I walk. One thing you can be sure of, Thorpe. We're gonna get rid of you. It's the 1900s. Man like you is out of date. You got to hang me, don't you? You're cowards. What are you? All of you. On Friday, October 24th, after five and a half hours of deliberation, the jury brought in its verdict. Thorpe was found guilty of murder. The jury has done its duty. They need have no fear of blood guiltiness upon their heads. And in accordance with their verdict, I sentence you to be hanged by the neck until you are dead. Shortly after, Thorpe and another condemned man broke out of prison. They were pursued and cornered, finally, in an alley in Laramie. Thorpe! No use running anymore. One of us is bound to kill you. Want it in the back like him? Killer like you. Great killer. You could have had one, maybe two of us. I'm done, Harlan. I'm tired. Take me to it. Take me to my hanging. Killer. Apache hunter. Standing like a whip dog. Yes. Like a coward. Afraid. Used up. Begging to die. They'd gathered the militia in Laramie and roped off the crowds that had come to see Thorpe Henderson hanged before dawn. The device that was to spring the gallows was a vessel of running water placed on a balanced beam. Good citizens, I look as scared as them. in his death cell. Still claimed he was innocent. You see it, Harlan? Yes. He was a bad man. 
Just now, the last bad man in the territory. He killed with cunning. Seems like his own way was the only way to use against him. Seems like. But it was true law that hanged him. It happened that way. Moving west. On frontier, names of persons and places are sometimes changed. The facts remain. Tonight's story was such a story.